So I wanted to visualize every worker in America. I started with a job my parents did when I was a kid, laundry worker. Each person inside represents about 50,000 workers. And then I added almost every other job. Cool. But then I wanted to see who sits most of the day at work, you know, like me, and who stands like cashiers and servers and construction workers. Luckily, a few years ago, the federal government spent five years surveying workers at more than 56,000 workplaces. And they asked workers about the physical requirements of their jobs. So that let me do this. Sitters on the left, standers on the right. You notice something, right? Yeah, me too. There are two clear groups, a cluster of workers here and then here. But it's not just sitting and standing that separates a lot of jobs in America. The entire lives of sitters and standers look pretty different. For example, here's who has a choice of sitting or standing at work. The higher the square, the more workers have a choice. And just to make things easier, let's put these dots here to track sitter and stander averages. As you can see, sitters are far more likely to have some autonomy. Now let's look at who can pause work when they need to. Again, sitters have way more autonomy. And here's who can work remotely. Yep, again, entirely sitters. And a lot of these jobs require a bachelor's degree. Although for a lot of people, that degree didn't really teach them to do their job. But now let's focus on standers. They're not just standing. They're also far more likely to have to crouch for work. For example, electricians. And they're more likely to climb, like roofers. And more likely to be exposed to wetness. For example, nurses. And they're more likely to be exposed to extreme heat, like cooks. And more likely to be exposed to hazardous contaminants, like mechanics. And all of these physical requirements mean that these jobs can be dangerous. Standers are more likely to get hurt or sick because of work. But it's necessary work. Standers make things, fix things, move things. Still, standers earn a lot less money. Many of these jobs don't pay a living wage. And there's a big racial bias in who does these jobs. These days, black workers are more likely to be standers. Medical assistants, correctional officers, and cashiers are disproportionately black. Asian workers are more likely to be sitters, with jobs like software developer and manicurist. Hispanic workers are far more likely to be standers, with jobs in kitchens, housekeeping, and construction. One big reason is that immigrant workers from Latin America are more likely to be standers, working demanding, often dangerous jobs for very low pay. And white workers are more likely to be sitters, but they also account for the majority of the workforce, so they're also the largest group of standers. During the pandemic, we talk so much about frontline workers keeping the world going. During every presidential campaign, candidates try to show that they appreciate standards. But here's the thing, the actual reality of this country shows that we don't actually value people who do this kind of work. For most of American history, people worked until their bodies gave out. In 1935, President Franklin Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act, which meant people who were 65 and older could receive monthly checks so they could finally retire. But the bill excluded agricultural and domestic workers. 15.5 million people who worked in fields, scrubbed floors, and did backbreaking work were left out. This also meant most black workers were excluded from Social Security. These days, the federal minimum wage hasn't increased in 15 years. Our public officials try to cut workplace safety laws over and over again. And Social Security will be insolvent very soon. And if nothing is done, benefits will be cut. The message is clear. When it's convenient, we'll celebrate the work. Every other day, we'll treat people who do this work as bodies for labor. <laughs>